What is going on, guys? And good morning, and welcome to another edition of FanDuel Friday, sponsored by the good folks over here of FanDuel and Roto Grinders. I'm back here with my main guy, my friend TJ Zorts, on this wonderful rainy Friday morning. How's everything in your world, TJ? How's everything? No rain over here. It's just about a nice, cool, crisp minus 25, but nothing to complain about because we got weather all over the place in the NFL this weekend. It's kind of the story of the week, but I'm ready to dive into this. Small little Christmas Eve slate followed by a smaller Christmas Day one. We got some holiday uh, holiday football. You'll love to see it. Yes, definitely. Love to see it for sure. And We definitely got a special one here. Um with with to, with this week, I think holiday season, so games will be played on Saturday um, instead of being played on a normal Sunday. As far as a full game slate, but only a few games will be on Sunday. So we're going to dive into the main slate though on on Saturday that starts at one o'clock on Christmas Eve, and we're going to begin at quarterback here, where we have the top spend here on the slate being Josh Allen going against the Chicago um, Chicago Bears and Patrick Mahomes at 9,200 going against Seattle. These guys are just so priced above everyone else here on this lane. It's for a good reason for how they've been performing the uh, majority of the season. But how do you feel about them this week on on, um, on the slate, TJ? So, I mean, obviously Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are in the two best spots here, but with both of them facing some bad weather and their prices just being so high – I don't know if I can kind of consider them my top plays this week. And crazily enough, the person I think that is the best play on FanDuel of the week is actually a guy in both of our pools here picking up the least amount of projected ownership as it stands right now, at least in the blitz projections. I'm going to switch my screen here to the RG ones just to see if if it's any different. But it's Justin Fields, running quarterback, going up against – and when, yeah, when we swap to the RG ones, he's still sub 4% owned right now. And so Justin Fields running QB going up against Buffalo. You don't need to stack him. Um, 15 rush attempts for 95 yards last week, six for 71 the week before. Prior to his injury, he was getting 13, 15, 18. Like this is a guy running the ball. And in a game that there's supposed to be a terrible weather in weeks, in the whole week that there's supposed to be a lot of bad weather, I think Justin Fields is my favorite QB because – the wind shouldn't affect him all that much because he's going to be running the ball on the ground. If anything, it should kind of enhance him because he'll run it even more. Yeah. And I, I kind of definitely agree with that sentiment there. Um, He definitely makes it to me for an interesting uh, play tournament play for sure. Especially with, like you said, the rushing upside. Um, And he just had the short dump off passes to like Cole Komet, if anything in this game, but that wind is what really concerns me out there in Buffalo. So, I, I mean, in Chicago. So I wouldn't Wait, be surprised. His top two receivers this week are Dante Pettis and Byron Pringle outside of Komet and Montgomery. So it's like yeah. we're not playing him for that for those downfield passes, no. anyways. No, definitely not. And, I, and that's why I also think like that's why I think the short passes would, would be fine. Like this week, you probably could run him out there naked. This might be the only like I'm not I'm I'm not a big run your quarterback naked guy. Like I'm I mostly want to play him with with some stacking partners, but. For certain guys like him, who has that that just such a high ceiling rushing the ball, and he's shown it this season, he's someone I think I would don't mind playing by himself this week. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm totally like I I am. You know me. I I love building my full stacks, but I'll be doing less of that this week because of the weather. And then uh, Justin Fields is a guy that I don't feel like I need to run anybody with like there's still some players like Patrick Mahomes just because of how expensive he is I'm making a rule in lineup HQ for that just in case I happen to be running a ton of lineups this week I will have three pass catchers in every Mahomes team Mm -hmm. um Minshew is going to be chalky this week who we're going to get to so I'm going to have at least two but up to two to three pass catchers in all my Minshew lineups um And so that's going to be kind of my way of differentiating with those guys. But for Fields, with his running ability, I have zero minimum set with a two maximum set. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that. And we have all right. So since we already brought it up with the Benchu, he's going to be the highest projected, obviously, own player here 
at least from the blitz projections on the slate, um, with Jalen Hurts not playing pretty much this week, but them pretty much securing almost almost everything that they need to secure um, in their division and in their conference. So um, the I know this game doesn't matter as much um, to them. It's more so about them just getting healthy. So I understand why Minshew was was popular here at the price of six point two. So I think it's a fantastic play this week. I don't mind them. But ownership wise, like this a guy's a couple le- little bit less ownership own own than him that I don't mind getting to, like a guy like Kirk Cousins in a dome matchup against the New York Giants. Uh how do you feel about those two guys? I'm definitely all right with Kirk Cousins today, and I don't mind some Daniel Jones in the same game. I'll be playing a little bit of both of them. I do like Minshew because of just how cheap he is. $6,100 opens up so much. And because of that, like I think like we see that 10% ownership. It might even get a little bit higher than that. He'll probably be the highest-owned QB on this slate. And so because of that, what I want to do is just make sure with him that I am stacking. This one's in a dome. I'm going to be playing two to three of A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Dallas Goddard, who has recently returned in every single lineup with Minshew this week. Yeah, definitely, and I agree with that, like, 100%. I think that's the way you have to go with, especially with Minshew. Um, I, I really like A.J. Brown this week, and I like uh, Goddard. It's going to be a downgrade for Devonta Smith for me. Unless, um, but, I mean, but you never know. Uh, I don't know. I, I've, been, I've been seeing how Gardner Minshew and uh, Devonta Smith's relationship has been. For me, it, the Devonta downgrade is less about Minshew and more about Goddard being back. Oh, I know that for sure. But I'm just talking about like the because you know you know how sometimes quarterbacks have their relationship with their receivers. Yeah. So they might. I don't. I don't know if Gardner it has a better relationship. You know, or is more close or more tight to Devonta. He might try to give him some more. You know, extra work in there in the game. So. That's what I'm thinking about. That's what I think about a little bit, but I don't think that's going to matter because, like you said, I think the more of a downgrade for Devonta is going to be due to Dallas Goddard being back, which is rightly so and how it should be, honestly. So, um, and a Kirk Cousins play, I, I love it this week. He would be my top on quarterback this week, I think, on the slate because it's in a dome game. It's a dome game, um, and it's against the New York Giants, and we know who we're going to run it back with. And this game could get. Go be probably the well, it has its tied for the highest scoring slate on the slate. Uh, well, behind KC in Seattle, but I think that that game could really be under sneaky and underratedly the highest scoring game on the slate. Um, with the bring backs you can run with it, it's, it's simple, it's right there, it's black and white for you. Um, and yeah, and Daniel Jones, I don't, I don't know how I feel about playing him. Um, this guy is. He he he's been steady. He's been doing decently this this year as a quarterback. So um, I don't think I don't know if you need upside on this slate. Um, like so, especially at the quarterback position, you probably can get away with him. Especially if he gives you like nineteen. If he gives you like nineteen, I think you're fine. And the biggest thing with him is just dome. You know, yeah. like you get you can get him in a dome, and then additional to to that, when you look at his pass catchers of. You're choosing probably two to three of uh, Richie James, Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton, and Daniel Bellinger. All of these guys are cheap, so they allow you to get to the Derrick Henrys, Christian McCaffreys, who we'll be talking about a little later. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it kind of makes it tough, but to for me to stomach the pill and just and then swallow it and, and pay for Daniel Jones and play him, but I'm going to have to this week, I think. But Kirk Cousins will be my – favorite on the board for sure. Um, <clears throat> I also see, you know, we got – you talked about Patrick Mahomes. We didn't talk about the other the guy on the other side, Geno Smith, who is in a good position against a pass funnel uh, defense in KC a little bit. How do you feel about Geno this week? So what worries me with him is obviously no Tyler Lockett this week. KC can just uh, walk in on DK Metcalf – in a week that there already is some bad weather. I do think Smith is going to struggle with this one a little bit, but they do still have the playmakers in Goodwin and who's speedy as heck and uh, uh, DK Metcalf as well, where it's like a screen pass could take their way to the house. So Gino's definitely going to be in my pool, but we've seen with Casey's defense that like when they play in tight games, they, they struggle when they are, when they're 
up ahead and they just get to rush four guys and use that strong uh, defensive line that they have, all of a sudden that defense looks pretty darn good when they're uh, rushing the passer like that. So um, he's not among my favorites, but he is in my small pool. I completely understand. He's that he, he's someone I kind of want to get to a lot, like a good amount of, but it's just it's just something I have to really think about how much I'm going to have him. It's the highest total we have on the slate, so maybe being at the field is probably fine, or maybe a little bit above, but I'm not going to be going too crazy on it. Um, the last quarterback we really didn't really touch on a mention yet is my guy Joe Burrow going against New England here. Um, obviously, it's in the Northeast, so. The weather might be a little bit of a concern here, but um, how do you feel about Joe Burrow this week in the going against the Patriots? Good defense, cold weather. I don't really think I want to get there this week. That's like this is probably the spot that scares me the most that I'm not really going to be getting to. But a team like New England is such a strong defense, but they're also not a very good team. I kind of feel like Cincinnati just wins this game like 17 to 10. And I understand that I can see that too. I I, I see it both ways, um, because the the thing is the secondary is going to be attackable for Joe Burrow, which is why I want to kind of play it. But I got to figure out and see go from there. But I think we can move on to the running back position now, where we have a plethora of guys who are in some smash position and good positions this week. Um, obviously, we got Chris McCaffrey being at 9,400, but Derrick Henry being the most expensive guy in one of the best matchups of the year for him, which pretty much almost every matchup is um, going against Houston here. Um, and they lead it off at, in, a nine, in a 9K range, followed by a close dab of Cook and Saquon Barkley and Ramondre Stevenson in the 8K range. How do you feel about just those top group of guys that I just mentioned? What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts on them? So I'm going to be going out of my way to heavily, heavily prioritize Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey this week. They're the top two on the board by far. Great matchups, great usage. Henry obviously has the better matchup, but he also has the worst offense behind him. Um, and so, like, these guys are both such an, in just phenomenal spots. Christian McCaffrey with no Debo Samuel, uh, no, like, I believe Mason's questionable for this one as well. Um no Elijah Mitchell, like we just see the touches he's been getting. 26 carries, eight targets. When McCaffrey gets that many touches, he he always does well. So those are the two guys I'm absolutely prioritizing this week. They're gonna be at least 40% each owned uh for both of them. And then outside of that, I'm just gonna be sprinkling in different pieces like Nick Chubb, Stevenson, Barkley. I like all of them. They're, they're they're fine. I like them quite a bit, but I see myself more going to the range of a little cheaper, Tony Pollard, maybe a little Ezekiel Elliott, maybe a little Jarek McKinnon. Um, Kamara, Montgomery, Sanders, they're fine, but I don't know how much I like them in this spot this week. I think I would rather just go down even more to somebody like a Kenneth Walker, a DeAndre Swift, get a little Deontay Foreman in there, and even mix in a little James Cook and Devin Singletary. Yeah, <clears throat> this position, like to me, like if I'm running any type of lineup, type of lineups this week, I'm playing at least one of Chris McCaffrey, Derrick Henry in every single lineup. Like I feel like this, just just make that rule automatically. Like to me, one of these guys and not both these guys are gonna smash here and have monster games. So to me, I want to get definitely some exposure to having both of them. I love the spot for Saquon Barkley as well, um, and Dalvin Cook. It, so I probably would want to try to get some like pair of one of these guys, if not both, with with some of these um, other top two running backs, and then maybe get a little bit different at the receiver position by going with some cheap guys. Um, but I, I, it's just this top tier is just kind of hard for me to not want to play these top four at least. Ramondre is my least favorite. Um, this just this week alone, but we know he's probably gonna get a lot of work there too as well. So, but I do uh, I do love the call that you made with the Tony Pollard and Zeke and Zeke, um, and and also the Kenneth Walker call. I think that's a a, a call like that's that's a great one. Sixty nine hundred for him this week against KC. 
he should be able to run the ball efficiently. And Pete Carroll loves to run the ball, uh, even though he seems like he's been letting uh, – I think he's been doing the same thing with Geno that he did with, with uh, Russell Wilson, but Geno's just been more efficient uh, lately. So I think that's the, that's the difference between the two right now. Um, I also do – Love the McKinnon and the uh, – I like the McKinnon call. But I think you can also play Isaiah Pacheco. I think they both are um, good spot. Both are in good spots here. Both can smash here in, in this in this game. I don't mind even um, – honestly, kind of playing them together. Um, the one thing I was going to say is, like, I like Pacheco in this spot. I like McKinnon in this spot. McKinnon is a guy I will stack with Patrick Mahomes. Eight yeah. targets last week, nine targets the week before. He's not somebody uh, – Pacheco, however, is not somebody I would play with Mahomes. I, I think you could, though. I, could, I think you could from a perspective of what if Pacheco has just a mouse game. This is a good game on the ground. And scores like two touchdowns, but the rest of, and McCombs throws, had, throws like three touchdowns and two of them were to McCombs. So three's not enough at that price, though. Uh, yeah, true. I guess you're right. I'd rather just play Pacheco with a cheaper quarterback. Yeah, I mean that might that, that might be the way to go. I I just think you can play them both together in a way. Um, if you're well, if you're not maybe running well, Holmes, I think I think mm-hmm. they're perfectly fine to be played together. Like, better have the Chiefs defense in that lineup though. Oh, of course. So that that's just a that's just a crazy, crazy way to get different. But I probably wouldn't run. I would run like make maybe like five lines the most if I was running some type of strategy like that. Honestly, but um, yeah, I think I think pretty much all these guys, the rest of these guys, just somewhat can be talked about and be put in the midst. Like like you said, Donato Foreman, I think is another good um, guy going against Detroit. Um, Kamara and Chubb, like. Let's talk about these two guys more because we were talking about that pre-show and like that's probably that's the lowest game total on the slate by far. Lowest total in 14 years. So like how do you feel about these guys? Like do you want to have a lot of exposure to them just because you know pretty much how the how how the game flow is going to pretty much be going or would you just want to just get at the field with them just because of that? Yeah, like, it's tough. Kamara's been bad. Uh, Chubb hasn't had a touchdown in three weeks. I think I'd rather get to more Chubb than I would Kamara. Like, I could just see this being a game that Chubb has 200 yards and two touchdowns. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And so I'm more hesitant to get to Kamara than I am to Chubb. I would rather get to Chubb, I think. But, um just because like we were paying above nine K for this guy earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Chubb is somebody I want to get at least at the field or overweight on. And then Kamara, I mean, if he's really going to come in sub 10%, I will probably be even to the field there as well. But I mean, I'll be making a rule in my lineups. I want to sprinkle in a little Kamara, a little Shahid and a little Taysom Hill, but I'll be playing maximum one of those in every, in, in a, in a lineup. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that spot. Because I we were talking about that a little bit pre-show that I think Taysom Hill might be a fantastic play this week because this sets up as a perfect game environment for him for sure. Is there anything else that you want to touch on that running back, or we can move on to wide receiver? No, let's uh, let's take it over to wide receiver. Okay, well we're moving on to wide receiver where we're going to be highlighted by probably the well the most expensive and the most owned guy on the slate was going to be Justin Jefferson. Going against the New York Football Giants here in the dome, um, followed by DK Metcalf, who's going to be the second most popular player, um, and obviously some Giants and some uh, Dallas guys fall behind them. What do you? How do you handling this? Ha- handling this this week with Justin Jefferson up top? Are you just getting as much of him, getting over the field? He's like my third priority spend up after those two top running backs. And then it's going to go to Justin Jefferson this week. Um, From there, like we see the AJ Browns and the, and the Amon Ra St. Browns, DK Metcalfs all with the kind of colorful tags beside them. I think my favorite is going to be DK. I like DK and CD this week in the, in among the 8k guys. But then if I'm not paying up for them or if I'm not getting all the way up to Justin Jefferson, um, 
some guys that I don't mind in tournaments, Ayuk, Gabe Davis, Marquise Goodwin, um, Rashid Shahid getting a lot of screen passes this week, a little Richie James all the way down at 5-2. But other than that, it'll just be guys I'm mixing in with some stacks. Yeah, and I, I kind of I get I get that sentiment. I kind of agree with you for sure. Um, I'm gonna be having so much Justin Jefferson. It's gonna be crazy. Um, I think he's the best receiver on the slate to play. Personally, um, I'm definitely gonna get back to playing some Amon Ra, St. Brown, as you mentioned. I think he, even though like think about this is we were not high on him last week because of that quote unquote weather, but he still had a decent game. So. I think that this week he can have a, a good game here in uh, at Carolina as well. Um, Jamar Chase is probably a guy I want to try to be over on a little bit just because I think he can take advantage of that matchup against New England here. And I love these two. If you had to choose between the Giants receivers, which one would be your favorite, Slayton or Richie James? I would go Richie James just based on the price. Okay. Uh, I kind of I kind of agree just from sentiment. I think Richie James is a – it's a better has has a better opportunity to get the shorter shorter targets and hopefully take them long. But Slayton, I think here gets the more gets it has a better rapport with uh, Daniel Jones. So that's just the only issue here with, between the two. But I think I agree with you with the Richie James um, call over Slayton here. Um, yeah, I think also AJ Brown also is in a good position against Dallas. I know he has a tough matchup with the corners. Um, here, but I think that they have been slacking off a little bit lately. How do you feel about him in, in, going against the the second that secondary over there? Yeah, I'm game for some AJ Brown this week for sure. Um, I'll probably only play him in lineups that I have Minshew, just because with Minshew being chalky, I'm just going to be saving him for for uh, full stacks anyways. So I'm probably going to be underweight to these Eagles pass catchers outside of Minshew lineups, but. I'll probably still be getting 15% of each of them because I'm playing a lot of Minshew. Okay, not bad at all. And this Houston situation, as we know, we've had a couple of these Houston receivers, you know. Um, I'm out. Kind of off. You're not playing any of them? I'm out. <laughs> he said, I'm out. <laughs> so you're just going to run no no run back for Derrick Henry at all? Just Only gonna... Houston player in my pool this week, despite how banged up and terrible Tennessee defense is, is uh, Jordan Eakins. Okay. And I completely understand that. <laughs> he said, I am out. <laughs> this. That is just so funny to me. Um, but, okay, we can move on, I think, because I think – I think also oh, hold on. I also do. We did want to touch on this. Like we talked about the slate in general as a whole. Like I think it could be potentially a low scoring slate. So like to me, if you're playing, if you're playing it that way, I want to get as much of these guys like on the San Francisco side as possible because they can still put up points. Shanahan is a it's an offensive mastermind for some reason. So well, not for some reason for a good reason, and he can put up find a way to get these guys involved and put up points. So, like you mentioned, Brand Ayuk, I think he's a fantastic play this week. Um, I would probably get some exposure to that offense, um, besides Christian McCaffrey, just in case they decide to go pull up some points here. Um, I kind of want to take a shot at Terry McLaurin. It kind of scares me, though, but I think he can have a decent game as long as as long as long um, Tyler Henneke is starting at quarterback. I think he's in play. So, um, anything else you want to move on to a oh, tight end? I made a rule. I'm only playing McLaurin in lineups that I play Christian McCaffrey. Um, I'll tell you what, though. I don't think it's crazy uh, after we've kind of talked about it a little bit. I just know who I just added to my pool. Brock Purdy? Yep. Yep. I I figure. I I think that it's a reasonable way to go this week, honestly. Because, like... because like the stack is so clear. Yeah. Like, I, I want to play two of McCaffrey Kittle Ayuk with him. Yeah. Like exactly. and that's it. That's exactly. really it. Exactly. And I agree with that. And and it's gonna happen either way. Somehow, some way, some one of these guys on that team is gonna blow up. If if the whole offense is blows up and has a good game, then you're so golden with that mm-hmm. as well. So let's get over to tight end since we touched on Kittle, where he will be in a matchup against uh, Washes in here and he comes in at 7k, the highest price, the second highest price tight end besides Travis Kelsey, obviously. 
who headlines the slate always. Um, and then we got Taysom Hill and Mark Andrews and Dallas Goddard running out the 6K and Dalton Schultz, but I don't know how much we're getting the Schultz here, and TJ Hawkinson. Oh, as you can see, pools are going to be very small for me with tight end. I think it probably should be for most people. But um, people like taking chances with some other guys. So, um, TJ, who are some of your favorite tight ends that you got on this uh, let's take on this slate today? So, Kelsey is going to be number mm-hmm. one. Um, and then from there, I'm honestly mostly just looking at stacking guys. We talked about maybe mixing in a little taste on. Jawan Johnson is just a touchdown machine. But, like, Everybody else, it's going to be because of correlation. Mm-hmm. Fanton Disley with Geno Smith. Daniel Bellinger with uh, um, with Daniel Jones. Jordan Akins in lineups that have Derrick Henry. Dawson Knox with my, with my Josh Allen. TJ Hawkinson, both on his own and with Kirk Cousins. Schultz, probably only with uh, Prescott. Goddard, probably only with Minshew. Kittle, probably only with Purdy. No, Kittle will play on his own, too. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I agree with some of those guys, like, especially the Dalton Schultz one. This guy has not, like, he, I just want him to have a big, big, like, a huge game, and he hasn't done it since the Giants, but I think that's also in correlation with Dak Prescott, you know? Mm-hmm. So, to me, he's, a, he's only a guy I have to play with Dak Prescott. Um, in a lineup for sure. I would definitely make that rule for sure. Um, and most of these other guys, I'm fine going without it. I'm not – I might X out Knox. I'm just not as high on this guy, honestly. Like, I understand he getting the targets the last couple of weeks, but is it going to be a third week in a row he's going to do that? Or likelihood of him not doing that, it's going to be high again, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I have to think about that and consider it. But I do love the spot – for T.J. Hawkinson, um, obviously going to be probably the most popular tight end on the slate, but rightfully so. I would get double, which I would field on him. Um, and then probably be next overweight on is George Kittle, as we talked about before. Um, I think this could be a, a good spot for him, as he's going to be relied on as a receiver here more consistently for Rock Purdy. And um, our GPP play of the day, Taysom Hill. <laughs> Like let's let's talk about him real quick. Like this is not something that I think you can plan for in a game. Like or or, or projections are gonna love and stand out unless he's that quarterback and starting. But like this, the game script is set up to be just a slow game on the ground, running it back and forth. Why would we not love take some hill here, take some shots on some GPP lives when a guy can potentially get ten tar- ten rushing attempts. And a couple targets, and maybe a couple passes, and the, and have that much touchdown upside and var- and variance here. I, vol- is, I know it's a volatile, very volatile play, but I think it's worth it in GVPs this week. What do you think? Yep, I agree with you. He's definitely going to be in my pool. Mix in a little bit of him with some Saints defense. I think it's a very uh, interesting way to go about things today. We could just see multiple drives. I think with how bad this weather is that Hill just is the quarterback this game. Yeah. Like, I think it could be a bit of a situation like Chris Strebler for uh, the Jets uh, on Thursday night. Yeah. Shout out to your call for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it just like, it's such terrible weather that why don't you just put the guy who's a bulldozer in and let him run or basically a wildcat defense and throw every now and then. Exactly. And I, and I agree with that hundred percent. So he would be so, and I'm going to roster a good amount of this week and, wouldn't be shy about it. Uh, now let's go over to defense. Um, real quick, who are some of you guys you like at defense here? I know this is a position every week that is very volatile, but you want to have some exposure to some guys more than others. What are some of your top defenses here? Yeah, so I'm just mostly going to target the crazy weather spots. And so I'm going to get a lot of Saints. I'm going to get a lot of Browns. Um, more more Saints than Browns just because we're looking at 20 plus percent ownership for the Browns today like I don't think I'm going to get that much but um, I really like the idea of playing the Houston Texans in lineups that I'm not playing uh, Derrick Henry I like getting to some Falcons against Baltimore play a little Chicago and Seattle at near minimum price against Mahomes and Allen sure but it's still terrible weather 
Um, Chase Young is back for the Commanders this week, so 3700 for them looks pretty good. The Lions, I'm okay with. Cowboys, Chiefs in the bad weather, I, I really like it 4-2. I think that's a great price for them. Um, and then I will mix in just a little bit of Bills and Ravens as well because of the weather not being great there. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to have a lot. I'm going to have some Saints defense here in this spot. I don't know how much I would have. Probably be a little bit at the field, maybe under. Um, I'll take some shots here on on Chicago defense as well, going against Buffalo at the low 3,100 that they are. And then I do want to mix in a little bit of some of these guys up top here, uh, like Dallas, just in case with Gardner Minshew, Cleveland, if Andy Dalton's going to – if Andy Dalton's not going to continue to play that well for our Saints here in this spot. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's probably some of the defenses I'm going to have out there. Defense is going to be pretty much like a crapshoot for me this week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to even have the – I might have the money where I can get up to play San Francisco. Um, I might want to do that. Or if not, Baltimore, I think it's in a fantastic spot as well. Um, I built 50 lineups in the optimizer without changing – exposures just like letting uh the the blitz run with my rules and my groups it ended up giving me and now i i kind of knew i would have to adjust things because like i'm going to be full stacking my homes and stuff like that but mm-hmm. it gave me 30 percent daniel jones 30 percent dak prescott 26 percent Minshew. 8% Mahomes, 4% Cousins, and 2% Josh Allen. Yeah. So I think there's going to have to be some adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely for sure. But it's not a bad start to it so far. Hopefully, the, you know, the Blitz typically knows what they're what they're doing over there. So shout out to Derek Hardy for that. And we're liking players. Daniel Jones this week, I guess. Uh, good luck to everyone. I'll be, I will be on the Kirk Cousins page <laughs> for sure. Primetime Kirk right now as he's done let that comeback. Um, last week against um, the team. So, anything else you want to say talk about before we get out of here? No, I uh, I think that's everything for me. Yeah, that's everything for me too. I think that this week, like I said, is a straightforward week. Uh, I think it could be low scoring. If it's low scoring, don't be afraid to play some San Francisco 49ers. Don't be afraid to take some chances, some stacks here. Play more so the high total games and not in the, some of the good weather spots. Just be some, um, the, the, the good weather spots. Don't play the bad weather spots. A lot of um, and then, yeah, just just try to get different. And, but there are ways to get different within those good weather spots because there's going to be some guys that are not going to be played there. Um, and just play you do how you think the game flow is going to go and stick to that. So for everything else, I think that's it for us today. I'm Andre. This is TJ. And we're going to just get out of here. Have a good one. 